I'm not uh, looking, watching the chat, so if anybody remotely has something to do or want to interrupt me, please tell me. Okay, and I'll, I'll also moderate if, uh, if, we need, if I need to get your attention, I'll just... Uh, okay. Uh, so, did you already start recording, Tim? Yes, I'm recording, so please go ahead, thank okay. you. Great. So welcome everybody. We are going to talk about uh, how to uh, contribute to the main QGIS core code base, how to uh, set up a development environment on your local machine, and how to uh, contribute code making uh, a pull request, uh, and uh, how to get it approved, to try <laughs> at least to get it approved in a reasonable amount of time. So, I would like to start from the official uh, GitHub repository of uh, QGIS and that you should currently see on my screen. Uh, this is the main repository where um, everybody contributes its, uh, its own code. So, um, in this page, in the main folder, you should see uh, there's an install file. This is a text file. Uh, which describes in details how you can prepare your environment and how the, there are different ways to do that, but how can you set up a development environment for uh, building and developing on QGIS. And uh, there are instructions for different operating systems. We are going to see how to uh, prepare your development environment on Linux. Um, because this is the platform, this is probably more easy to, to start with and because I'm working on Linux, so <laughs> this is the system that I know better. And I would say that probably the vast majority of developers, uh, QGIS developers are currently working on Linux. So it's uh, easier to find instructions and to find help to set up uh, an environment on Linux. And it's much, much easier than on the other operating systems. Uh, so, uh, you, you can go through this document, document yourself, but basically, um, uh, well, I prepared something for you, which is a, a development uh, virtual machine based on Vagrant and VirtualBox uh, that you can use. And um, this, um, I, don't, I don't know if you, everybody knows what is Vagrant, but it's basically a system to uh, create a virtual machine and to provision the virtual machine. Uh, provision means that you run a couple of bunch of scripts inside the machine and everything you need gets automatically installed. So the machine is ready to go and ready to start compiling QGIS. There is even a CMake uh, project already configured. So you can just install the machine and log in and you have all you need to start developing on QGIS. And, but we can go through the installation process is just a, a single uh, this is not this is not the, the machine that I wanted to show you sorry uh, it's another big machine let me find it is it please okay this one okay there is a readme with the instructions so basically you need to install vagrant and for the people in this room, I have the machine here, so I can just give you the machine if you want, and it's already built. Uh, otherwise, these are the instructions. And it should work on different platforms, because Vagrant is cross-platform, so you can run it on Windows and have the Linux virtual machine inside your Windows or your Macintosh environment if you want. And Okay, these are the instructions, and at the end, what you get is a Qt Creator, which is an IDE uh, specialized for Qt development, and it's very uh, useful and easy to use, especially if you want to debug uh, C++ code or even Python code inside a, a real powerful debugger. And the scripts here that do all the hard job is just basically a single script this one and we can describe how it works 
Uh, there is some common code for the virtual machine, so basically create the user, send, uh, install some uh, a desktop environment, so you can uh, directly run a desktop environment in the virtual machine. But what is interesting for us is this part. Um, this single long command install all the dependencies that you need to build QGIS. So these are development packages uh, which provide headers and, um, and the binaries of all the libraries that you need to build QGIS. Uh, it's a very long list and is more or less the same list of packages that you can find in the main install file in the QGIS uh, folder. Uh, so back to these, the first step is to install all these dependencies. Then, uh, yeah, we are also creating some couple of sim links to Ccash. This is not technically uh, necessary, but it will help in speeding up the compilation uh, a lot. So if you are going to build QGIS several times, and this is normally what you do when you develop, because you need to build and rebuild several times, using Ccash speed up things a lot. And, but it's not technically necessary. And then we are downloading Qt Creator, so the IDE, and install Qt Creator. Uh, the last step is, well, this is just a clean, so remove some stuff to make the image smaller. And at the end, we are cloning QGIS. So that means that we are downloading uh, um, the repository inside your uh, user folder. And uh, we are also copying in the, the machine the CMake cache file. We will see that in details later. Uh, the CMake cache file is, uh, contains the information uh, to configure and build QGIS. So this is useful so you don't have to do it yourself. It's already done and we can have a look and change some tiny bits and see how that works. So after you have successfully built your, this virtual machine, you, you do not need to really do that. If you already have a, a, a recent Linux installation, you can probably just, if it's based on Debian or Ubuntu, you can just probably run all this, uh, this single command, install all the dependencies, and you can use another IDE if you don't want to use Qt Creator, or you can install Qt Creator and use it to build QGIS. That's completely up to you. Um, so, what we should say next, we can probably jump to the virtual machine and have a look To that, uh, it should be this one. Why it's not working now? Nice demo effect. Okay. Yeah. Let's make this reset and restart. I'm restarting the virtual machine. Okay, so uh, this is the virtual machine is a uh, Ubuntu LTS, so Xenial, and you can log in with Vagrant. Let's pass with this Vagrant. Just 
Just a moment. Okay, here we go. So let's start console. Uh, can you see the, the, is it too small? Let's try to make it bigger. bigger. Yeah, it is a bit small, Ale, if you could make it a little bit yeah, bigger. I try to make it bigger. Appearance. Is it better? Make the text green, not green. Appearance, uh, green on black. Yeah. Still too small? No, that's it's perfect. Okay, so uh, maybe blue is not much readable. Let's try. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Let's make it black and white, maybe. Yeah, that's clear. Maybe better. Okay. So, just to show you that in this directory we have a QGIS uh, directory which contains all the. This is the clone of the GitHub repo, so the main GitHub repo. I'll stop it. So, we have in the git directory all the git stuff and yes of course you need to learn git a little bit to to use uh, to develop in QGIS because you will need to create um, uh, your own clone and to work on your own clone then when you are ready with a, a modification uh, we, we can try to do that in, in this um, in this demo um, so what we have here is uh, what we need to do now is la launch Cube Creator. Cube Creator is uh, um, the IDE that I was talking about. And we, the f if you use the virtual machine, you should find it already configured. Or I'm not sure about that. No. So the first step is to open the. Um, the, the project, and you should in simple project. Uh, no, it's like this. Open file project. Vagrant QGIS, and you need to look for a CMake list txt file. So the CMake list.txt file is the main file that you need to open in Cube Creator. Let's a new one. This one. CMake list.txt. So back to Cube Creator. Uh, you see that um, automatically in the debug. Uh, folder that was already created in the virtual machine gets detected and what we are going to do is to have a debug build of QGIS. It's a little bit smaller on the screen. I don't know about other things. My screen crashed. Yeah. What crashed? Not other. That was my Zoom. Ah, Zoom, Zoom crashed. Mm, that's bad. <laughs> And so, uh, how does this uh, Cube Creator works? You have uh, the build kits. Build kits are, um, the kit is a configuration of your compiler, debugger, and the Qt libraries that you are going to use to build QGIS. This is already configured for you, but if you need to change anything, you need to click on the kits and you can configure the compiler, you can configure the Cute version that you are using to build QGIS and everything you need is here inside. And the, the button is manage kits here. But there is already a kit configured for you in this virtual machine, so you don't need to do that. So the next step is just to click on configure project and it should start running CMake. CMake is uh, a, a, a program which um, 
field and creates the make files that are needed to build QGIS. So it's running now and if you go to projects, we see the configuration of QGIS that we are using for this build. And here inside you can find all the switches to enable particular features, features of QGIS. So for example, if you want to build the server or you do not want to build the server, or if you want to have a, a debug build or a standard build, it should be here too, CMake. Okay, the build type, as you can see here, is a debug build. What does it mean is that you can step debug into QGIS, into C++ code of QGIS and Python code of your plugins because you, you can run Python code and you can step debug, not in the Python code, but in the C++ part of the bindings that you are using in your plugin. So this is very useful to do also. And you can choose between debug, release, and uh, release with that info is only for Windows, I think. Um, if you want to develop on QGIS, I strongly recommend you to use a debug build, of course. It's a little bit slower, but yes, please. That was actually my question, because so far I was using just the uh, uh, release tooling, what's the debug? Uh, how does it work with Basically, it's a bit slower, and is it a bit slower also during the, uh, like, also the development compilation, or? Yeah, I think everything is lower. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's slower to build, and uh, it's lower to run, only a little bit. Yeah. You wouldn't notice it. But the great advantage is that you can step the bug into that. So you, you definitely need that if you want to develop yeah. you just uh, what else? Uh, okay, we have the probably the Python. Oh, but is everything all right? Every, every, in any event, in, this is the main configuration of, of, of your build. You can uh, change everything you want here. But it, it's quite easy to break it, <laughs> so don't touch it too much. And there is also an advanced tab that shows a lot of other features of your build. And when you're ready to go, uh, you can just click on the hammer icon here on the left the bottom side and the compilation should start. And here in the compile output tab, you should see the progress of the compilation. Uh, what I did here was also, let's go back to projects. Yeah, this is the, you have two, two tabs here, build and run, and this is a build, and okay, what I probably didn't do here is to uh, configure the, the compiler to use multiple cores, uh, which also speeds up a lot of compilation. So this is not enabled by default if you are using Z, GCC as a compiler, if you are using CLAN, it is. So we are using GCC here, so it would be probably better to uh, add, um, add a step, add a build step here, and uh, probably custom process step would be okay, and make, and the argument would probably be minus J something, oh, wrong keyboard, minus J something, and this, it's probably what you need to, if you want to use multiple cards, in, in this case, for. And so the compilation should be going. It will take a lot of time <laughs> because I interviewed for a machine, so it would probably will take something like uh, 25 minutes or something like that. Uh, we are not uh, going to wait so long. I will probably switch to my uh, real machine to to show you the rest of this. And what else here? Yeah, of course, uh, you, you can edit the code here. So you have access to the sources of QGIS. Uh, we could maybe talk a little bit about how the source code is organized inside QGIS, 
Uh, QGIS is made up of uh, a couple of libraries. And if I'm not wrong, there are four, at least four libraries. One is the core library. And that is the most important, of course. Then we have the GUI library. And we have the server library. And there's another one, maybe the app library, I'm not sure. And so, um, the, no, the app library is not, it's not the library, it's the application itself. So the application of QGIS, the, the desktop, is uh, um, an application that used the libraries, the core libraries and the GUI libraries of QGIS. And the providers are, are also libraries in, libraries in some sense, but it's a little bit different. So let's have a look to the main um, folder of uh, the source folder of QGIS. And here inside we have the core, that is the, the folder which contains the source code for the core library. We have the GUI here, and we have the app here, which contains the main.cpp file. This is the entry point of the QGIS application, the desktop. We also have the server here. So this is the main folder for QGIS server. It also has a main CPP somewhere. No, so we have this QGIS map serve.cpp, which contains the main function. So this is the entry point for the server. And we also have the providers. The providers are the, um, are the small, let's call them libraries, that are loaded at runtime dynamically. So they are kind of libraries, plugins, whatever. And you see that you have one folder for each data provider that we are able to use. The main and the most important one is probably the OGR provider. Uh, which handles shape files, shape packages, and a lot of <coughs> other formats. And we have a GDAL provider for rasters. And we have DB2, RJS, RAS, Microsoft SQL, and OWS. And for the services, we have WCS, WFS, and WMS, and special item passwords, of course. So if you are going to work on a provider, this is the place where you want to go. There is a question in the chat. They are asking if PyCharm is permitted to include the library machine. Absolutely not. I did never use that. <laughs> but you are free to use it. No, it isn't. But you can add it if you want. Uh, so the, the well, the idea with this uh, virtual machine was uh, mainly to target C++ development, not uh, Python. But you can develop in Python. Inside, you just need to install the IDE that you want, and you can do that. So the building is proceeding very, very slow. So we should better jump on. On a real environment. Okay, now I'm out of the virtual machine. I'm on my real machine. I'm using more or less the same kind of setup. But what I wanted to show you is uh, if you want to start developing. Uh, on QGIS, what you probably need to do is you will have uh, your own QGIS folder, uh, which contains the clone of the GitHub repo that we have seen before. So the first step here, if you are really, really starting, uh, would be to create an account on GitHub. Uh, once you have an account, what you can do is Sorry, this screen is too small. 
you should go to the main QGIS repo and hit this button, the fork button. Uh, when you click on fork, you are basically creating uh, your own copy of the QGIS repo. And when you are working on a new feature or Fixing the bug, you are ready. I developed this new feature. Of I fixed this bug and I'm sure. So let's make them here. You will have the remotes. Uh, or let's say, let me know, minus B, I think. Yes. So, for example, here I have uh, the origin repo, which is mine. Um, my own clone of QGIS, the upstream remote that is the main official QGIS repo and I also have Nile Lawson because I was testing something with Nile recently. So you can have multiple uh, repos configured in your Git installation and if I wanted to fix something on, uh, on, on master what I should do probably is to get check out master okay I was in the middle of <laughs> something okay so uh, I want to fetch upstream it means that I am downloading the latest changes from uh, the upstream repo which is the official QGIS repo I can just do git pull directly. I hope to, the network is still responding. Yeah. Okay. So I can do a git pull to make sure I'm. Yeah. So I should be now up to date. Yes, yeah, this is the latest commit. And if we go to the website, we should see the same commit ID here. Latest commit is 6A8 something. So <coughs> I'm up to date, right? So if I wanted to start working on a feature, on a bug fix, what I should do is git checkout minus V to create a new branch. Then what I normally do is call the branch bug fix to number of bug and a description, something like that would probably work. And so, as you see, I'm, I'm now on a new branch, and this is the new branch where I am. The branch, this is the active branch here. So I can start uh, changing the code. And I, for example, if we want to change a string, I don't know what to do now as an example. Okay, this is just a debug message. Uh, so, but anyway, if I wanted to change something, I can just do this. Go back to Git. And if I hit Git diff, I see that I changed this string here. So next step, I want to commit this change. I'm Sam, well, first I need to add it. So what I do normally is add minus U, which means I'm adding all the modification to the existing uh, files. So if I have anything new, if I created a new file, this would would not work. I need to explicitly, explicitly add a file. But this is much safer because I normally have a lot of temporary files here and there. If you just hit minus A, which would mean all, you make a mess because you are adding temporary files or whatever. So minus U is much more safer because you are only adding, adding files that were already in, in, the, in the repo. So anything new. And the next step is git commit minus m or just leave it like this. 
And what we do here is uh, to add some tags. For example, this would be a bug fix. And I can add test. Uh, something like that, but for example, if we were working on WFS, we could have done something like this. And test commit for the presentation. Okay, here you uh, can also say fix, uh, fixes, bug number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, something, and write a description about what are you changing? Uh, okay, ready to go. And now what you do is git push origin. Origin is my own repo. And bug fix one, two, three, and say and so on. So this will push my modification in my own repo. If I go to the main repo now, I should, you know, this may take a couple of seconds. So you hit the F5 a couple of times until you, okay, you see that? So GitHub is telling me that I have a, a new branch ready for pull request and if you hit the green compare and pull request here, you are starting the pull request. Uh, the first line here says that we want to uh, fork, uh, to, to, to merge. This branch, but fix one, two, three, four, six, and so on, uh, from my repo to the main QGIS repo into master. So this is what we are going to do. You can add, uh, here are some checkboxes. So we should make our homeworks and check the boxes here. So I've done all this, I've done all this. I didn't change anything here, but it's okay. So you check the boxes to tell other developers that you are a good guy and you read the guidelines and so on. And when you're ready, you can create the pull request here. And now under pull request, you will see your new pull request here in the queue. If you click on that, You see that this is green. It means that there are no conflicts with the base branch. So we are able to merge. If you have conflicts here, you need to address the conflicts. Otherwise, it's not possible to merge. And there may, may be different reasons for the conflicts. So maybe another developer had uh, did some commits. Meanwhile, while you were doing your own stuff, or um, you forget to rebase, Rebase means to get or to fetch all the uh, latest changes from the main repo and to reapply your changes on the top of the latest changes. It may fail if you are working on the same area of code or some other developers. And these are probably the most difficult things to do if you are not used to, you, to Git. So this has nothing to do with QGIS itself. It has to do with Git. It is the version revision control system that we are using for QGIS. So you can end up having written a lot of new code and new functionality in the core system. And if by chance something else also works on that, then you can find them and say, what do you do? Yeah, in that case, you could have a conflict yeah. because uh, Git is very, is very smart. So if you didn't change the same function, the same lines, uh, Git would probably do the right thing and allow you to merge. Yeah, no conflicts. But if you are modifying the same lines with the same functions and Git is not able to, to, to understand uh, how to merge that, then you have a conflict. But 
this, this here is merging them. That's only you can do here. Okay, yes, the process of merging is uh, only a core developer or anybody who has comment rights can merge. Yes, so you can but, can but probably it, merge by yourself. But would I then know what other GitHub user is also working on that code if I can copy? Like yes, what would you sh yes, what you can do here to, to make sure so if you have conflicts, what you need to do here is to uh, rebase. So you would git fetch upstream first to, to get all the latest changes from upstream. And you need to git rebase uh, up from from wall, from where? From upstream master. If you are working on master, if you are working on uh, 2.18 or 2.14, the branch would be different, of course. So it would be. But that would only be the other person's code that already been merged to the master, right? Yes. If he's if he has also no no he's before me, then it would have been merged already, right? Yeah. So upstream master that would uh, in this case do nothing is up to date because we already fetched the latest changes and nobody did any change in, in between. So we are good to go in this case. But what I wanted to show you is that there, are, there is another process running here. This is the continuous integration process running on Travis. And uh, it will take some time and it will, be, will probably fade because it just fades sometimes for no reason. Uh, we need to be fair about that, that happens. And so you need to click on details, but well, just wait. If that fails, you click on details, and here you will see the reason of the failure. We can just probably go to um, bid history and have a look to some failures. So you can see, I mean, okay, here we have one. You see, I, I, what I did was uh, going to build this tree on Travis. And you see there is a failure here. We can have a, have a look. We can click here. And OK, we see we have two different jobs. One is OK. Uh, so basically, Travis run two different jobs uh, for each pull request and for each commit. One is the code layout. Code layout controls that you have, um, uh, you have done your, uh, your things in the right way. So you write your comments, uh, you uh, write documentation for the class, you didn't make any uh, spelling mistake. And so it has to do with, with uh, uh, the code uh, quality, let's say. And, but the real one, the real tests are running this one. This is the most important, but they're both important, but these will fail much more often. And let's have a look what happened here. View the logs. And we are looking for something red, okay, here. So this is the test that which failed. PyQG's Postgres provider. And okay, this is very bad, it's a segmentation fault. So we have basically no information, so very little information about what is going wrong because this will not tell you anything useful. Yeah, maybe. So the backtrace says that there's something in Q variant in the Q5 core. So starting from the Postgres provider library. But you cannot do that much. What you should probably do is try to restart the job here. This is the trace, a lot of information, but nothing really useful. And let's see if uh, we have anything else fading. probably close the, the tab here but okay let's go back a little bit see make errors so 
we have one test fail out of 393. So this is the only test failing. What you should probably do is try to run that test on your local machine uh, to make sure you are building with tests. Okay, this is the projects. Okay, you need to make sure that you are enabling the test for, in this case, it would be PG test because it's a post, post JES test. I didn't enable that. So you need to enable the test and apply configuration changes and rebuild QGIS. So click on the hammer again, and then you will be able to, to run that test locally. How to run the test locally? It depends because we have some tests which are written in uh, C++ and some other tests that are written in Python. And the way you, you run them might be different. What I mean is that if it is a C++ test, you usually run it from directly from the IDE. Clicking on this, you can select the test that you want to run and you can run it and debug it from the IDE directly. You can do that on Python too, but you need to do some extra steps on configuration. What I did is, uh, you, okay, let, let's try. There, was, there, there is another talk about testing, so I probably shouldn't go too much into in depth about this. But anyway, if you change to your build directory, and this is mine here, in the virtual machine is just build local. Uh, here you can run the test with C test uh, minus R, which stands for uh, regular expression and the name of the test. So this would run the test locally. And you can also add a minus uppercase B to show a verbose output from the test. So you can see something more. What's the regular expression part here? Are you going to throw it? Uh, the regular expression is just because I want to run this particular test and not all the tests. That's why I'm using the regular expression here. It's a filter. It just tells the system I want that particular test and not all the 393 tests. What is if you and Neil did work on one repo? something and then you have work in your other repo that fixed a related problem maybe but another part of the code can you merge those two before you commit it to yes you technically can but what you should probably do in that case is make uh, separate commits uh, so it's better to have small commits well, you rather that, that as a core developer you would rather receive more smaller commits uh, excuse me, I didn't get your own. Uh, you, question. as the one approving the commits, yep. you would rather have smaller commits than many? In the same pull request, yes. Okay. Yes, that's better because uh, you can cherry pick. Yeah. What, what you can do is let's uh, have a look to the pull request here. Okay, so let's, uh, I don't know. Uh, Maybe this one. No, it's just one commit. One commit. <laughs> yeah, it usually depends on, on how big is the amount of code that you are changing. Okay, here we have three, three different commits, for example. So this is a pull request. And okay, this is pretty good. So we have a description, we ha even have a snapshot which shows exactly what has changed. Oh, this is for GUI stuff, of course. If you have something in, in core, you do not need to put a, a snapshot or a short video, but if it's on GUI, it's very useful to understand what, what, are you, what do you want to change. So we have these three different comments here. Let's have a look. Okay, so we have a description of the small changes that uh, this um, girl has done. 
And if you go to file changes here, we have a list of everything has changed, of all the commits which are inside the, the single pull request. So we can view everything in, in a single view. We do not need to examine every commit. But they're all three from the same repo, right? Yes. If they were the same branch, you mean? Because when okay, so you, you normally work with repos? you normally work with two repos. One is the upstream official QGIS repo that you cannot write to, and the other one is your your clone. So you have basically two different repos normally. This is the typical scenario. Okay. So you are working on your own repo, and you make a pull request to the official one. Yeah, you can have more, but you cannot. Well, you, no, you cannot make a pull request which contains changes originating from different repos. No, you cannot do that. But what you can do is cherry pick. So if you have different repos, you can cherry pick. It means take a single commit and apply to another branch. So you can work on different repos if you want to make your life complicated. And cherry pick the changes and it means copy the changes, we apply them to a different branch. Yeah, this is pretty common. And the advantage of having different list of small commits is that we can cherry pick. So maybe, okay, this is okay, this is okay, this is not. We can cherry pick and say, okay, let's apply commit number one and commit, it's not so common really, it doesn't happen so often. Or maybe never, <laughs> but it's possible. Uh, yeah, you yeah, uh, right. That's so special. Yes. Yes, it might be useful for backporting. Yeah, I'm speaking so that people can hear. So maybe they don't hear you. <laughs> yes, it can be useful for backporting too. So if we have different commits uh, and some of those can be backported, it would be easier to cherry pick those individual commits back to 2.18 or 2.14 branches without having to apply the whole pull request. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, so uh, any anything else? Uh, any question? Everybody sleeping uh, remotely? No, we're still, we're still listening. <laughs> Any questions from the Zoom channel? Seems like nobody has questions right now. Uh, anything from you, team? You want to add anything? Um, just, no, no, I think you've done a very nice job of describing everything and, uh, and just to mention that in the README there's also notes for other platforms, so if you're on Mac or um, Windows is probably more complicated, but they're all they're all um, described there. And I guess, like in order of simplicity, Linux is the easiest to get your environment working. And then Mac and then Windows is the most complicated. Um, and you have some other options as well. Um, you've mentioned to me before about building Windows on Linux, and uh, so there's a lot of different ways you can be building. Um, just have a look in this file that oh, it's got up on the screen now. Um. Yeah, yeah, there are different options. Well, unfortunately, th this is really useful if you are working on Linux, the MXC uh, way of building, because there is now a script inside the MS minus Windows uh, folder, MXC, uh, where you can build a, a Windows version of uh, QGIS from Linux. But unfortunately, it lacks Python and the bindings, but it can be very useful to test uh, core modifications of GUI or something like that. So, and, and it's very, very fast to build. Yeah. So thank you very much. I will stop the recording now. Um...